Hello, everybody. Welcome to the British Buggle. I'm your host, Barani, and the 1920s is filled with impacting events that may have you not want to overlook what is going on in society. Let's take a look. World War I has finally come to a close. A prime minister named David Lloyd George promised, and I quote, a land fit for heroes following World War I. But after a short post-war boom, soldiers found it difficult to find jobs due to their injuries and women refusing to give up their jobs that they had while men were at war fighting. Due to war debts and such a poor economy, the British government is unable to fund new economic reforms and the economy is unable to become better. Let's go to Yafet and Naham for more insight. Thanks, Barani, for that great introduction. Has it been hard to find a job lately? Has the callback from your employer been taking too long? Well, if so, I have some very bad news for you. Our country has been experiencing a period of economic decline. Shortly after the war, our country's unemployment rate has been raised over 10%. This has been causing much trouble for our returning servicemen looking for work post-war. Many that are already employed had to give up their jobs for the war returnees. Our country incurred debts equivalent up to 136% of its gross national product as we continue to suffer from the slow growth in structural problems ever since we joined the gold standard. The gold standard is where our national currency or paper money has a value directly linked to gold and this has made conditions worse for our economy. An overvalued exchange rate led to a loss of competitiveness. This meant our exports had been overvalued and our monetary policy had to be kept tighter than necessary. On to you, Yafet. As Naham said previously, our economy hasn't necessarily been in the greatest possible state, and the recent events have not helped this case. Recently, many of our coal miners have decided to go on strike. They caught on to the government's attempt to reduce wages and make working conditions worse. Workers, specifically miners, went on strike in attempts to prevent this from occurring. Around 1.7 million workers went on strike, but the strike ended up being unsuccessful. During the general strike, the middle class filled in for the jobs that people were striking. This encouraged people to return to their jobs and eventually ended the strike. The government displayed the acts of the workers to the media and presented it in a negative manner. This caused society to view the acts of the workers as sinful, ultimately causing the strike to end. Back to you, Bron. Man, I feel bad for those workers. They work hours on end in horrible and worsening conditions, and the government is still cutting their wages. I think we can all see where they're coming from and why they are protesting. We remember the Representation of the People Act passed back in 1918, allowing women only over the age of 30 who also met a property qualification the right to vote. But finally, after many years, in May of 1928, the Equal Franchise Act allowed all women over the age of 21 the right to vote, and this increased the women eligible to vote to 15 million. In other news, let's see what Kaylee has for us in the entertainment industry. Thanks, Barani. Today I'll be talking about the latest fads sweeping the nation, including a review of the latest film all the way from Hollywood. Most recently, we've seen the flapper trend take cities by storm. The simplicity of the designs have been raised by every independent young woman having a night out on the town. No need to break the bank either. The shorter and boxier design makes it easy to stitch right at home. However, for our listeners who have a thing for big brands, Chanel's newest con- collection hits stores this Friday, featuring models with a sleek and stylish cut. Speaking of which, I recently took a trip to the cinema where American actress Claudette Colbert flaunts this modern bobcut on the silver screen in the international hit It Happened One Night. Hollywood has outdone itself once more with this romantic comedy, suiting everyone in the audience. Moving on from film royalty to real royalty, Prince Albert and Lady Elizabeth were finally wed this past Sunday and were crowned the Duke and Duchess of York. Duchess Elizabeth was seen in a magnificent gown that, rather than hide her figure, accentuated it. The dress was designed by the same court dressmaker who's become a favorite of Queen Mary, Madame Hanley Seymour. The dress was nothing like we've seen in this decade, as are most of the Duchess's more fitted garments. The question on everyone's mind, are these tight dresses coming back in style, or is the flapper look here to stay? And now for an ad. Sick and tired of the same old scents? Want to get a taste of Paris glamour without leaving your home? Introducing Chanel No. 5, the newest and most luxurious perfume from designer Coco Chanel. Just one spritz and you'll smell like you came straight off the runway. Order yours today in the paper, because every woman alive loves Chanel No. 5. Here's a quick message from our sponsor. Have you been feeling ill recently? 
Has your doctor diagnosed?